just called Kuitavi Dark Age Theory. Preparation to see what other page theories are, and in particular, what other geometries are available besides the Mendel geometry. And as, as we found out, we need for uh, formulating the gauge theory of gravity, we need a, a broader framework than the Mendel geometry, and that's human cutter geometry. And as such, it just uh, said, there is this book of Fremd and the Geometry of Physics. Uh, you can find the ge difference of uh, uh, geometric structures. I'm talking about Fremd, the Geometry of Physics. The geometry of Physics. It's Cambridge University Press. Um, and it has three additional, I believe, and there is also a paperback edition, which is for students uh, at, a, at a, a good price. In chapter four, which is the first chapter, I just talk about the simplest quadratic gauge theory, the Einstein Hartmann theory, or Einstein, but it's historically more correct. I will uh, use just the abbreviation Einstein Kaufmann theory, and the abbreviation is EC for Einstein Kaufmann theory. First, I, uh, in 4.1, I would address a question which seems important uh, to me. It is neutrons in the gravitational field. In the gravitational field. Polon. And the first experiment, which was sort of bringing in uh, new aspects in this whole discussion, is the Colella Oberhauser Werner experiment. in the gravitational field. So have they printed or they uh, uh, Well, there are a couple of preprints where they describe the apparatus they are going to develop and partly the progress reports. Uh, in, in the book I cite, uh, there is an article by Bessler in, uh, in the archive uh, uh, 2012. It's, uh, so this one is uh, next year. Yeah, uh, this is already a conference in next year. And this is where you can go over information. If you uh, Google Reddit 2014, it will tell you about the conference and about the conference. <coughs> Just, the, what is the Colella Oberhaus of uh, uh, Werner experiment? Okay, uh, this, uh, for, for short, I just said our experiment. It was published 1975 
<coughs> first of all, neutrons in the gravitational field, if you have an atomic reactor, it can produce neutrons. And, and you can bundle these neutrons and, and, and get them out of the reactor. And you can chop them in order to make monochromatic, uh, uh, fairly monochromatic neutron beams, etc. I mean, the first experiments with neutrons in the gravitational field date back to uh, 1954. What they did was just to, to, to let neutrons fall in the gravitational field and, and, and uh, look up whether it's the same per parabola as you have with ordinary uh, mass points. So this is taken for granted that a neutron, if considered as a point particle and if the spin can be neglected, which can be in most circumstances, then it behaves like a, a mass point. But uh, the new thing in, in the cow experiment was that they uh, looked for uh, matter waves, neutron waves. And these neutron waves, uh, they were uh, put into different gravitational fields. And by putting them in different gravitational fields or potentials, there was a phase shift between these um, uh, neutron waves. And this phase shift, it was possible to measure. So that's, uh, as far as I'm aware, the first experiment where gravitational effects and, and h-bar have been so, sort of uh, observed at the same time, or they're both got what the design both. So um, how can we, um, first of all, what they, what they have is, uh, well, let me try to sketch it a little bit. You have a, say it's, a silicon monocrystal. And this is not so easy to grow. I mean, this is a thing which is about 10 centimeters long. It's, it's a single crystal. So all the atomic planes are really uh, parallel to each other. <coughs> It's a monocrystal, so they are all aligned in according to their crystal structure. And what they then do, they cut out material, say uh, here. which is very complicated to cut out because you want that the atomic planes are uh, kept parallel. So you must very carefully remove this material and the same here, you remove it here. Okay, I hope you get some kind of idea uh, what, what I'm going, what this is meant to be here. This is removed, and what is left over is then here, here, here. Okay, can you? I think what I see it. Um, so this is about 10 centimeters. <coughs> You have to be very careful. So uh, these are still aligned if you really carefully remove the material. And then you have a, a neutron beam coming in. And this neutron beam has been chopped and synchronized uh, and, um, uh, so that it has a, a certain velocity. Um, um, it, it's rotated fields. It's really done. Uh, it's called a chopper. You chop. Um, 
uh, and, and, and then they uh, just filter out the neutron beam, which has about, well, about a kilometer per second as velocity itself. So about 10 to the minus 5 C is the velocity. And uh, then you can easily compute the uh, De Broglie wavelength and the De Broglie wavelengths. So the wavelengths, wavelength of this neutron uh, is about uh, 0.2 nanometers. Okay, so it's in the order of, of uh, atomic, uh, the atomic lattice. And uh, so you, it gets, um, I'm not showing now the details, I'm just symbolically, it gets split into two pieces, an ordinary beam, which goes this, and a, a break reflect, a, a Lowry scatter beam, which goes in this way. And then this, uh, okay, uh, again, the same uh, uh, thing happens. You get them, and it moves this order. You get a beam which goes straight ahead, and a, a beam which is uh, Lowry scatter. And so finally, you get such a thing. And here you have some counters which count the neutrons. Counters. And uh, the whole crystal <coughs> is built on an axis which can be turned around. So this crystal can be turned around. If you look from the side in order to make this clearer, and we are to the other side here, I think. Uh, so if you have here, say, an x coordinate, and you have here uh, the c coordinate, then your uh, your your, uh, your neutron wave comes <coughs> in, is split in two pieces, and uh, is reflected here, goes in this side, in this side. It here again, goes up, and these two beams are then reunited, and there, uh, um, there are the counters. So uh, this neutron beam goes in a lower gravitational potential, this in a higher gravitational potential. So of course then there will be a wave shift, and this wave shift, uh, you can just take the Schrödinger equation, because these are non-relativistic Schrödinger equation um, for the stationary, the stationary case minus h uh, bar square divided by 2m times delta the Laplace oper uh, operator plus and this is the inertial mass and this is the gravitational mass which we know is uh, to uh, is, is the same according to the English experiments. Um, phi, gravitational potential, applied to psi. I think it's uh, time to the time to minus i h r partial psi over t. This is uh, the gravitational potential, which uh, is just the Newtonian potential. And uh, now a lot of people said, okay, we see the equivalence principle is violated because this depends on the, uh, on the mass. Uh, the mass doesn't drop out. But this is uh, not the case, at least not in, in a limit. If you take also in, in classical mechanics, the hamilton jacobi equation, for a particle in a gravitational field, <clears throat> then also this is mass dependent. And you see the Carvinsos subjects write down this equation. Hamilton Jacobi equation is also mass dependent. It's only if you um, uh, remove the momenta and substitute the momenta by m times v. M, uh, 
Mars times velocity, then the Mars drops out. And also here in the WK in, in the WKB approximation, the mass drops out. Drops out. Okay, now if you want to, you have to substitute here the gravitational potential, but you see what you have to do is to build this contour integral here. You just integrate over this contour and then you can easily compute it and the result is then that you get a phase shift um, um, theta gravitational is equal m squared, this is the mass, times the gravitational acceleration, 2 pi h bar squared times lambda is the body wavelength, and a is the area element of the area here, and sine is the alpha, alpha is the angle between the normal of this area element and the gravitational of course, if you rotate your crystal, uh, your crystal such that the area lies horizontally, then there is no effect. So the, the good thing in this apparatus is that you just measure this, and then you turn it around 180 degrees and, and, and measure it again. So you get the double effect, so to say. And you, uh, this is the very... Uh, uh, and then... This formula was uh, verified. Well, the percentage is about uh, one percent. It's not too too good. Uh, anyways, as you can see, this gravitational sh uh, uh, this shift, this phase shift of the is, is depending on, on the, there is the h bar and there is the mass. Um, uh, so uh, you have here a gravitational effect which, uh, which, which relates also uh, to the Planck constant. Okay, this was the first experiment. There are more experiments which, which I cannot all discuss here. It, the only thing I want to, to make sure is that you understand that in, in nowadays uh, one measures the wave function of the neutron and how it behaves in the gravitational field. So if you uh, discuss uh, gravitational theory, you should take care not only of mass points, but also of matter waves. And, and, and that you, that matter waves coupled to the gravitational field as expected by using the Schrodinger equation uh, can be seen in this experiment. Of course, Schrodinger equation is um, a non-relativistic approximation, of course, what you can do is you can uh, take the Dirac equation and uh, can then look for the consequences and look for the non-relativistic approximation. Um, and uh, so, uh, but this uh, um, um, approximation is, is good enough. I just want to mention another experiment which is of the same type but they didn't measure the gravitational field, but they measured acceleration, horizontal acceleration. And this is the so-called uh, bonze rodewski experiment. Experiment, I think that was So in, instead of the gravitational field, they have a, a, an acceleration which they produce and, and the acceleration also gives a, a phase shift as expected. So, you know, this is what you want to know in order to be able to apply the equivalence principle that the, um, acceleration can also uh, 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 mimic locally gravitational effects. And uh, this is what in the Bonze uh, Wolfsky experiment is done. They apply an acceleration and measure the phase shift, and it, it is as if there would be a gravitational field. Of 
course, they cannot do it in a gravitational, I mean, they could do it in free fall, but this is not so easy and costs a lot of money. Um, but what they did is uh, they had the apparatus in the gravitational field, but they put the, um, um, the uh, acceleration in, in a horizontal direction. So that's what they measured. So acceleration produces a phase shift, and gravity produces a phase shift, and they are of the same type according to this formula uh, method we have here, uh, gravitational acceleration or just a uh, produced acceleration which mimics the corresponding gravitation. So, so technology is improved very much you see their uh, four inch uh, silicon uh, yes. slot but now it's 18 inches. And okay. people can produce 18 inches of container for commercial purposes. What is 18 inches? Uh, uh, single, 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 single. 50 centimeters. So. Oh, uh, 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 above, above. Uh, no, not quite. It's uh, uh, 18 inches. It's like a two, uh, 45. Okay, so 45. Uh, at the time, they had uh, uh, 10 centimeters. I mean, uh, one of the uh, authors is well-known. Uh, uh, he is in University of Missouri. Attached to this university. I mean, the German professor there, and he used to show me these crystals and, and play with it and so on. It's, of course, you have to have a reactor. I mean, in the University of Missouri has had a big reactor, but now they cannot afford it anymore. Uh, and they only produce some isotopes for medical, medical purposes, as far as I know. And these experiments are no longer done. And also, this, uh, and then there came, of course. And also, here, uh, progress is after 20 years from 1983 people can measure gravitation acceleration vertically using atomic yes i mean this is what i'm just oh, going to, to mention you have now a top, uh, say first of course kasevich and shu kasevich and shu <coughs> they had atomic beams and they such experiment not with neutrons but with the atomic beams and they are much more accurate I mean they are of the order of one percent and they are <coughs> ten to the minus six or something like ten that like almost nine I mean it's comparable to the optical measurement the free fall optical measurement okay, okay. and uh, uh, it uh, could be more precise in the future and then, then the optical are comparable mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean this accuracy is is uh, is, is is now uh, dominated by uh, or, or uh, substituted by experiments. One also has Jose um, um, Einstein condensates, and you let them free, uh, fall freely, and you can see how the matter wave uh, sort of disperses uh, uh, this by Kater, for instance, he has produced such big pictures. Mm. I mean, they are both new devices. And also, I mean, atomic environment people try to compete with uh, optic people on gravitational wave detection. But they are, they are, they are, they are, they are different. With the PEC? Yeah. Uh, with uh, PEC, yes. 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 Okay, I mean, uh, one of my colleagues in Bremen has PEC and lets them fall freely and uh, looks how they develop. And, uh, this is a, 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 okay, but I'm uh, teaching about gauge theory, not about experimental. Uh, you have to ask uh, Professor Lee if you want to have better uh, uh, insight into these things. Okay, so, uh, and this is uh, a motivation for me now. I have. Uh, for who I want to talk about physics laboratory. We have in, in chapter one, we have discussed about, I introduced what I call Einstein's laboratory and now uh, laboratory. And I, I indicated uh, five uh, different uh, points which, which I discussed. Uh, uh, the equipment of such a laboratory. Einstein 
had as equipment for his laboratory uh, a mass points, and we have now um, as equipment for our laboratory such type of experiments. So let me uh, make a list. So we have here Einstein's laboratory. Einstein's lab, lab I mean, laboratory for 